Hey guys, welcome back to another deck profile. I'm Richard, and today we got Babzargra updates. Cool. Um, got the new support from DBT04. So we got some new arm cards. We got Trick Moon. We got the whole shebang. So let's just go ahead and get right into the deck profile so you guys can see how I updated my Babzargra deck. All right, going off, starting with the grade zeros, like we always do. Starter is going to be the same one that comes in the trial deck. It's the Sealed Blaze Dragon Ar Arhinsa. Um, the entire ride line is the same from the trial deck, so you don't really have to worry about getting anything new. Sealed Blaze Dragon Namor Car. Namakar. Namakar's skill is that it rides on top of the grade zero. You sold last one. Search your deck for up to Sealed Blaze Sword or Sealed Blaze Shield. Put it in your hand, shuffle your deck. It also has a very good skill that when it attacks, it gets 2k, but we don't really run in the main deck, so you don't have to worry about that. The grade two, Sealed Blaze Dragon Halebadra. Uh, Halebadra's skill is when it's placed on Vanguard Circle by riding on top of the grade one. You pick an order, uh, arms order from your drop zone and you add it to your hand. So you can discard an arms for the cost of the ride deck and then just ride it. It's like a free ride. Uh, don't run in the main deck, but it's rear, rear guard skill is when it attacks, if your vanguard is armed, this gets 5k. So it's a good, good little 15k beat stick there. Uh, going on to the end of the ride deck with Sealed Blaze Maiden Baths Argra. So main ride of the whole deck. Skill is auto vanguard circle once per turn. When it's armed, you soul charge one and you pick a grade one or less and call it from the drop zone. Second skill is act. If this unit is armed with two or more cards, you Soul Blast two. Retire your opponent's front row, and this gets an extra critical. So good board wipe, crit pressure is great, and being able to arm helps you fill a board. So Bazurg is all around just a well-balanced card for the most part. Um, it's the armed cards is where she really like comes to shine in like her aggressiveness. So let's just go ahead and go into the rest of the main deck. Starting off with our other three copies of Babs Raga. So it's, you know, the exact same card. Persona writing is a thing. So you want to run all four copies of Babs Raga just so you can kind of keep up with the like aggressiveness of the grade fours in the meta right now. Next up for grade threes, Sealed Blaze Dragon Adarla. I definitely think this card is a great four of. You should definitely be running a red four. Uh, when this is placed on rear, if your Vanguard has one arm, you cannot blast one, you choose an arm from your hand or drop, and you arm it to your vanguard. So arms work in the same ruling as every other order, meaning that you can only play one per turn. And the goal is to have both arms attached to Bazarga. So Adarla gives you the opportunity to be able to put both on immediately, making it really easy to kind of start picking up the speed on Bazarga and start swinging at your opponent. Uh, the second skill is if during your turn, if your Vanguard has two or more arms, it gets an extra 5k. So it's an 18k beater. That's really good. So 18k beat stick helps you get your arms immediately for a single counter blast. So really great card overall and definitely think you should be running forward and it's a great addition to the deck. Very helpful. All right, so that's it for normal units. We're not going to go into the arm cards. Going into the spear, Sealed Blaze Spear, Adhitaya, Adhitya. So I'm going to try my very best to pronounce the name of the arm cards. So um, it's a right DD arm, so it goes on the left side of Bazarga. Uh, its pay cost is kind of last one. Its skill is similar, similar to Adarla, which is when this is armed, you draw a card, and then you play an additional arms this turn. So it allows you to play the second arms the minute you arm this. So this is pretty much always gonna be your first arm or your go-to arm. So that that way you can just get both right away. You already search the shield through the ride line skills. So you'll have the shield in hand pretty much good to go. So you definitely wanna run for the spear just so you can see it more often and you can play it right away. Um, Counter Blast 1 is really honestly very easy pay cost and you're gonna get your soul and call something from drop as soon as you arm it. So definitely wanna be running this out. Uh, this last skill, almost forgot, continuous. During your turn, uh, the unit armed with this gets 10K. So Bezorg is already getting a free 10K to boot just for the fact that it's armed with this unit or this order. So definitely wanna write it for. 
All right, next up, I am running one of the gun, sealed blaze gun, Chandra, just because I think it's cool and I pulled an SP. Um, you can definitely get away with not running this. I just personally like it because I think it's a funny card. It's a left DD arm, so you put it on the right side. Soul Blast one for its cost. And when the unit armed with this attacks, you counter blast two and you give that unit or Babs or an extra drive check. At the end of the battle, you put this in your drop zone. So you're losing the shield because the shield is also a left DD arms. But if you're trying to push for game and your Vanguard already has the extra crit uh, from the tiring skill, you can get that extra drive check just to kind of help you push for numbers and make your opponent maybe like have to drop extra hand or maybe like definitely force out that PG. Um, and also extra drive checks in the format where over triggers are the most relevant, I would say. Giving you an extra opportunity to save an over trigger, why not, you know? Um, Counter Blast 2 is really heavy though. That's the one thing I, I will say. And the fact that you lose it afterwards kind of sucks. But if you want to push, it's definitely a pretty threatening card. But besides that, it's kind of just like a throwaway card. You can run it if you want. You don't really have to, but I am. And there's plenty of space for you to run around with it. So one arm or one gun. Next up, running three copies of the sword. And like I said, you can just drop the gun and add a fourth copy of the sword. So the sword skill, right DD arm. So left side, pay with soul blast one. Uh, when the unit armed with this attacks, it gets 10k, so just like the spear. At the end of the battle, if your, uh, opponent's fang your opponent's fanger, if your opponent's damage has four or less cards, you kind of bless two, put this in your drop, and you deal your opponent damage. This is a really helpful card because if for whatever reason your opponent, like, maybe PGs and you're just kind of, like, losing your pressure, your offensive against your opponent, you can still at least pay the kind of bless two drop this and then you know give your opponent extra damage so that there's some pressure going on there um and i would say that even after you do lose the sword since this goes to drop you can just replace it with the spear afterwards or another sword so it's not that much of a loss compared to losing the shield when you play the gun um so i would say if you really aren't feeling the gun just add in a fourth copy of the sword and then everything works out the same way for the most part so yeah we do three sword and last but not least one copy of sealed blaze shield swamba uh, we only run the one copy because you, it's searchable and you immediately search it so it's left dd arm so it goes on the right side paid with counter blast one when the unit armed with this is attacked once per turn that armed unit gets 10k into the end of the battle so because it's once per turn you get to choose which battle you want to activate it for so if you're like kind of like oh like my opponent has one last attack after i got a trigger it's a 10k block you can just say uh, i'm using the shield so block for plus 10. so and it's there it's permanent it doesn't go away afterwards so your your vanguard is going to get a permanent 10k shield for one battle for free the minute you put it down so definitely want to search this out first if you get the spear you put this down right away right afterwards and then you got that big defense and then the idea is once you're pushing for the late game and you're like, uh, might as well, I already have it in hand, throw the, the gun down and then get that extra set of drive checks. But for consistency sake, if you want to do that, like I said, drop the gun, add another sword, but you only need one shield. So that was it for all of our grade threes. We're now moving on to grade twos. I am running four copies of Travis instead of the, uh, instead of the seal dragon. Uh, grade 2 because Travis gets you more soul. So Travis skill is act once per turn. If your opponent's rear guard was, was retired this turn, you kind of blast one, soul charge one, choose one of your opponent's rear guards, and you retire it, and this gets 10k. So there's a lot of things happening here. One, you're getting soul. Two, you get to retire an additional rear guard besides the front two that Bazrog had killed off. And three, you get 10k. So there's now a 20k beater. You retire three of your opponent's rear guards in one turn for a counter blast and soul blast two. And, you know, you're getting one of those souls back. So I feel like Travis has some really good consistency with Bazraga. While the Sealed Dragon is good, I believe its skill is like you discard an arm card, you draw a card, and it gets 5k. It's good for like deck filtering and stuff like that, but I feel like Travis really helps push for the offensive being that it is a 20k beat stick. 
So that's why I'm running Travis and also like I said, you're Soul Blast in two for Bazwarga and you kind of want to do that as consistently as you possibly can. So having Travis to help you fill your soul is also really nice. So if you have two of these on the board, you just kind of blast two, soul charge two. So I like Travis. Next up, grade ones. New card, Sealed Blaze Dragon Isita. So this is more just kind of like there was space in the deck for it. And it's a pretty decent booster and it can be called out from the drop zone by Babzorga's skill at so big number. Uh, during your turn, this gets 2k for each card on your Vanguard Circle. So that's the two arms, Babs Argos had three cards, so 7 plus 6, 13k booster or 13k beater. So you can put this behind Travis and then that's a 33k column, so it, it's just big number. Um, I'm only running it at 2 just because of space issues, and also it doesn't really do much to help the consistency of the deck in getting resources. It's just kind of like a good little, uh, good little, little number there, little tech. So we run two copies of it. And lastly, for grade ones, we got our four PGs. So Twin Buckler, you know, just go to D standard PG. So lets you get away with PGing for free if you have one or less in hand. Love, love these PGs. All right, now we're on to the zeros and the MVP of the entire deck, Trick Moon. Love Trick Moon. Trick Moon is such a cool looking card. Uh, when it's placed on the back row, center rear guard from drop, you can have charge one. So it's basically like you can only use this with Babs Orga for the most part. You can use it with Nirvana, but it's so iffy to kind of work with it. But you know, you can, you can work around with it. Um, so you use Babs Orga's skill after you arm a card to call a grade one or less from drop. So you call it to the back center rear guard circle, you counter charge one which helps you pay back the cost for your arm units, your arm orders, sorry. And then its second skill is Dress Boost. So like overdress, but like completely different. <laughs> uh, auto, rear guard circle. When this unit boosts, the boosted unit gets 10K at the end of the battle for each card uh, your Babzorga is armed with. So it's literally just for Babzorga. Gets an extra 10K for each additional arm. So it gets plus 20K. And then the sword and the spear both give an additional 10k, so that's plus 30k going to your Vanguard. It's just a really, really, really big number. <laughs> so Trick Moon is a great addition to the deck. All right, moving on to the rest of the grade zeros, which is our trigger lineup, starting off with our over trigger, Drag Veda. Drag Veda does what every over trigger does, which is when you trigger check it um, or damage check it, you give your Vanguard 100 million power, remove it from play, draw a card, and then the additional effect is you get it when you drive check it, uh, you restand your Vanguard. So Bezrug already gains a crit and has all the extra power from like the sword or the spear. So it's just still a big number, um, but it's the fact that Bezrug has a crit. So being able to restand your Vanguard with a crit, swing with again, pretty explosive turn for the most part, but like that's the point of all over triggers in general. So yeah, we're gonna run Drag Beta for that restand. Now, also extra drive checks is nice. All right, starting off with the newer triggers, three copies of the draw, Flare Veil Dragon. Uh, if your opponent's Vanguard's grade three or greater, it gets 5k shield, so it's like the front trigger from set two, except it's a draw. Uh, we run draws because we wanna see our arm cards when we wanna see them, and we wanna be able to draw into resources because there isn't really a lot of superior calling or field building capabilities outside of Bazraga calling a zero or a one or less from drop. So draw triggers kind of help you fill your hand so that you can kind of start putting down a field and making a board and find the arm cards you're looking for. And then going into the rest, I'm running four Burning Flail Dragon. So it's the crit from set three. At the end of the battle, this boosted you put into your soul. Choose one of your units and it gets 2k. So while it's a trigger at the skill, the skill for the 2k is kind of eh, whatever, but being able to fill your soul is nice and it's still better than just having vanilla. And we're definitely running eight crit in the deck because the whole goal is to like swing with a big number at your opponent's vanguard. If they don't have a PG, they have to take it. And then you get multiple crits and then you deal your opponent like three to four damage. So crits win games we gotta we're gonna run in them crits and like i said before running crits so i'm running four copies of conduct spark 
It's the same artwork that came in the trial deck, so I'm like, you know, fit the aesthetic, right? Um, I know Blaze Maidens also fit the aesthetic, but I, I like Conduct Spark. It's a cool looking dragon. Right, and last but not least, my favorite heel in all of D series, uh, White Light Dragon Parasolus. Look how cute it is. And it's foiled. I love it. It's also the same artwork that came in the trial deck as well. So get to use the best artwork for the best uh, Dragon Empire deck. I know Nirvana is arguably better, but you know what? I said it. Azrog is better. <laughs> so uh, that was pretty much it for the deck profile. Um, I guess I'll go ahead and show you like a really quick example of like what the combo would look like. So pretty much how it's going to work when you're starting off, it doesn't really matter what your starting hand is going to look like. The main things you're going to want to really look for are at least like Trickstar and a Darla to kind of get you going just so that and maybe like a random arm card so that you can maybe have like some form of starting hand. This is like a really good starting hand for the most part unintentionally, <laughs> but um, this is pretty much how you're going to want to start it off. So starting the game, you're going to draw your card. If you have an arm card or a trick star, it's kind of up to you what you want to do first. I would say if you don't have the spear and you have a Darla, you want to go ahead and put this in your drop zone first for your cost because you can get it back later. So you can go ahead, you can drop that and then ride your grade one. The grade one skill is you soul blast and you search your deck for the sword or the shield. And the go-to is always going to be the shield. So gonna go ahead and do that first. And then opponent's turn's gonna go, or maybe you go next, but let's just assume you win first. Gonna take some damage, maybe your opponent got a crit because they got lucky, so let's just keep it going. You draw your card, you stand phase. Um, now you get a free ride if you discard an arm. So let's go ahead and drop the shield, ride that grade two, and then because of the grade two skill, you add an arm back to your hand, and then um, you can go ahead and start off with your your grade two turn if you want. You can go ahead and maybe throw down some grade twos and some beat sticks, or you could just stick with a grade one or the grade two on your van swing. That's not bad. Now take him with some more damage. Maybe you see like, oh, maybe I can put these trips trick stars in my drop zone. Let's PG something and keeping it going. Now we start our next turn. Uh, now we're gonna discard something. So now what we can do is we can discard pretty much anything, including a trick star for our, our final ride cost. So let's go ahead and do that. Go into Babzarga. Now we're gonna start arming things. So usually what you would do is if you had the spear or Darla, you would do that first. So, but, or if you had the spear, you would do that first, but if you don't, you do a Darla second. That's what I meant to say. So let's go ahead and do the shield. So we do kind of boss one for Swainba. Boop. So now we can activate Bazarga's skill. So as soon as I'm armed with something, you can soul charge one, call as uh, one or less from drop. So we're gonna call the zero, which is the Trick Moon. Now with Trick Moon's skill, since it's called to the center back row behind the van, you counter charge one. It's like you got it for free, right? So now we still have to remember we have that same arm from earlier. So now we can still pull it out with the Darla. So let's go ahead and call that out. Counterblast one, grab it the first thing that we pitched from the beginning of the game, and go ahead and arm that. Unfortunately, Bazrog is once per turn for the calling skill, so you can't really do anything else. But now you have a pretty decent field looking starting up. And even if you didn't call the Travis earlier, you could call it now and start go ahead and setting up the main phase. So with the main phase, you're gonna soul blast two. You're gonna tire two of your opponent's front row units and you're gonna get a crit. Travis skill now can go off, so counter blast one, soul charge, retire another unit. So now, even though you soul blasted two, you still have another two soul to use for next turn. And then you only use two counter blast, three if you count the counter charge from Trick Moon, just to set up this board. So it's really, really consistent for the most part in the ways that you can set up Babs Jarga for that first turn. And then you just go ahead and, you know, eh, whack drive checks. But you know what? That's just that's just Vanguard at this point. Um, but yeah, so decent sized hand, five cards. Um, hopefully you get better drive checks than me and you have a better defense. But of course, we, we still have Sway and Bruh to, you know, give us that 10k shield if we need it. And then hopefully you get damage triggers. Nope, well, six damage, you lose. <laughs> Anyways. That's pretty much how you want to set up your turns going into the Babzarga turn. 
And I know maybe some people have some trouble trying to figure that out because they're like, how do I get both arms consistently? My main thing is I would say, it's gonna come down to what your opening hand is. It's gonna come onto these three cards. So if you have a Darla, Spear, or Trick Moon, they're kind of gonna decide for you what you're gonna do. Hopefully if you have a Darla in hand, you're gonna go ahead and have some other random arm, maybe even if it is the Spear, but you just want at least the Spear, Trick Moon, a Darla, and some like random order maybe to kind of start your deck. Anything else you open up into, you wanna put back, even if it is like Persona Ride costs. So. But this is the best way, I think, for you to set up those turns. And I definitely think Trick Moon is super, super, super important to the deck. So you definitely want to run four of those. And yeah, that's pretty much it for how to kind of play this deck. So thanks again for watching the deck profile. Really appreciate you guys always coming out and checking out my decks. And if you have any comments, questions, or concerns, just go ahead and leave them in the comments section below. And I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.